In addition to heat transfer by radiation, conduction, and convection, you can also transfer heat energy by evaporation and its opposite, which is condensation. But let's take a look at evaporation. I need you to imagine a whole bunch of liquid particles. Uh, now, this might be water, for example, and the particles are moving over each other, slipping and sliding over each other. Now, they don't all travel at the same speed. Some of the particles have more energy than others. And the ones near the surface, if you have a particle which has got a lot of kinetic energy, a lot of heat energy, if you like, it might have enough movement energy to overcome the bonds that keep it as a liquid. And so here we have one that's managed to escape and it's broken free of the liquid bonds and it's become a gas. And because it's, it's broken free and it's escaped, it's actually taking away energy from its, uh, the, the particles it's left behind. And so the temperature of the remaining particles, the heat energy in here, uh, will decrease. And that's cooling. That's why evaporation causes cooling. So let's take a look at this flashcard and see what the words are. So evaporation happens when particles of a liquid gain enough kinetic energy, kinetic energy, i.e. they've been, they've absorbed a lot of heat energy and they're moving very quickly, to break their liquid bonds and escape as a gas. Woohoo, I'm free. Freedom! Evaporation therefore causes cooling because only the faster, only the faster or hotter particles escape, leaving the slower, cooler particles behind in the liquid. Uh, and this is why wet washing or damp, damp washing hung out to dry feels cold. Or indeed, if you get out the swimming pool and there's a wind blowing, why, why you feel a bit chilly, then more chilly than you would feel if you were dry. It's all to do with evaporation, taking heat energy away from a liquid.